Here we are, the last class of the Range Finder program. We've obviously got the retesting tomorrow, but this is our final class together as such. I hope you've really enjoyed all of the different movements that we've done, the different styles of stretching. If you made it this far, well done. Um, we've just got the retesting tomorrow, so look forward to that to see your gains. But let's finish off with a good class. We're going to be working into the hips, working into the shoulders, and also into the back. A couple of stretches that I've got at the end, we won't be using the same technique that we've done through this week. I want to try and um, have a little bit of relaxation and contemplation for the last two exercises, just for you to recap um, and pretty much consolidate what you've done in your own head, because you should be proud of yourself. Anyway, let's go into it. Bring both feet out towards the front, point the toes down and then back up towards the head. So come back and forth, start to activate through the angles, turn through in a clockwise fashion, back round the opposite way, and take your right leg out towards the side and drop the knee in towards the left thigh. Keep the left leg activated, don't slacken off right now. So just internally and externally rotating through the right thigh, move up and down. Both feet come forwards, point the toes again, back and forth, turn them through, back round the other way, and left leg comes out, drop the knee down. Maybe you've got some restriction on one side compared to the other. And that shows a place that there can be some progression, which is what this is all about. Okie doke. From there, I want you to keep the hands behind you. As you've got your hands behind you, I don't want you to just be slumped through. They're there to promote good posture. Take your right foot on top of your left and then push the body forward. So you can almost go up onto the fingertips if you can manage that. But just until you get a, a stretch through this front leg or the top leg, come back and forth between those two points. Bit of a dynamic stretch there. The first stretch that we're going to be doing is the double pigeon. We've done this before, it's an intense stretch through the outer hip. Back and forth, back and forth. Right, take the right leg, and I want you to, you can just take your left hand onto the bottom of your right foot if you want to. If you've got it available to you, then you can cradle the foot and take this right knee and interlink the fingers around the bottom of the right leg. And then, you're sort of pulling the foot upwards and drawing the lower leg of the right, um, the lower part of the right leg in towards the chest. So you get a huge stretch down through the glutes here. And you pull in and back down. So lose the posture and gain the posture. And keep going between relaxation and stretch. Right leg comes down. Left leg on top, take the hands towards the rear again, push the chest forwards, come onto the fingertips and lengthen through the spine. Push the chest towards the toes, come back towards the heels of the hands, push forwards and back. A dynamic stretch we're moving with because we're coming in and out of the stretch Putting on full tension, but through movement. Dynamic stretching. And then one more push forwards. Again, cradle or grab onto the foot. If you want to just grab the foot and the knee and pull up, then that's fine. I find it a lot more comfortable and I get more out of this. Now that's definitely my tight hip. I can feel that in this position. I come up and down, lose the posture, gain good posture. Keep the bottom foot activated, try and keep the hips square on so you're not opening out towards the left. Up and down between the two. And 
have a look around to see if you've got a block or something that you may need for this next pose. Just depends on how flexible you are. You'll be able to remember it if, uh, if, we've, done, if we've done this one before. We're taking one of these blocks here and I'm using this side part of my mat just to align this whole posture up. Take the low part of my right leg and I frame it with that side of the mat. It doesn't matter if you, your foot's pushing out towards the side, it's more important that you have the lower leg from the ankle up towards the knee along that straight line. And then from there, if you want to, you can have a block underneath. I'll see some people who sit like this actually, um, and it, because they sit like it a lot, it looks really comfortable. They've probably done it from childhood, so they're, they're quite lucky in that respect. But not in a respect that some of them, uh, the people who I've seen do this, they do it on one side. So they're super flexible on one side, but not in the other. Now, you're taking the other leg and you're framing the bottom part of your bottom part of your, your left leg and framing it up with the bottom part of your right leg. I'm going to take that block away. We can take the block there just to create a little bit more height and it might make it a bit more manageable for you. If you feel like you're just falling backwards then come come to the uh, with your back against the wall and that will allow you to find a better position and you won't have to worry too much about fighting against um, this tightness pulling you out of the stretch. So I'm going to come down from the block and you're just resting the hand onto your, you're resting your hand onto the, onto the knee. And basically what I want you to do from this point is we're obviously trying to get a stretch down on this left hip. So guiding this knee down towards the right foot. When we create the PNS stretch, it's pushing up against the hand and then we release away. All right, so we do four rounds of that and then we stay in the stretch for 30 seconds. A little bit of mobilization going to the other side. So rest the arm on the knee. It's not about pushing it down, it's just resting it on, keeping a, an upright posture. Now push into the knee and hold and inhale one, two, three, four, five, six, and exhale. And it release. Pull up again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, down. Pull up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And down. One more. Pull up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And release. And just hold there. Let that arm go heavy. Let gravity do its job. Don't fight against the stretch. Come into this place of calm and stillness. And let the body down towards the floor. You'll feel like you might want to fight against this position, but over time, the hips will open up you'll have access to a greater range of movement. Out of the stretch. Take the feet down towards the sides and rock the knees over from side to side. Take the left leg at the bottom this time. You just gotta be careful with that one because Sometimes if you're pressing down, you start to create this torsion through um, the lower leg and you get knee pain. So ensure that you're not pushing into the stretch too much. You want to use the block on the other side again just to prop that knee up. And if you can't get the foot all the way over to the opposite knee, then just have it further down. Have it further down. So I can do that there. and that's quite comfortable for me, but I want to try and get progression, so I'm bringing the foot up there and you have this triangle in between the legs. Okay, if you want to use the block, use the block, rest the arm on, pull up the knee in towards the hand, inhale for one, two, three, four, 
five, six, and release. Pull up one, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale one, two, three, four, five, six. One more. One, two, three, four, five, six. From there, I'm getting quite close now. I was miles away at the start. My hips are a little bit tighter this week because I did um, a really long run on the, the Sunday just gone. So, depending on what exercise you have been doing, then it is going to affect your flexibility. If you've been working through a muscle, it'll go into this state of shock and fatigue in a way that it tries to recover and protect itself. So it might be tight. So don't worry if some days you can be more flexible than others. It may be because of the activity that you're doing, maybe because of stress, could be a lot of different things. So if we've discussed through the whole of the program, keep this breath lengthened. Next stretch we're going to is hero pose, um, or saddle. And this is the intense, different intensities that you can have for this stretch. One more breath there. And peel this top leg off. Both feet down, rock the knees over from side to side. Even just come into a downward dog position. Kick one leg out a couple of times. Kick it out and then open it out through the top. Opposite leg kicked out. Open out through the side. We come onto this kneeling position, Thunderbolt pose, and drop into your child's pose. So keeping the, the knees narrow and the heels right underneath the seat bones, stretch the arms out towards the front of the mat, sink into the floor. Walk the left knee out to the left hand side of the mat, right knee to the right hand side of the mat, keep the toes together. We we'll work ourselves down into the hips. Before we go into the main posture, we're going to bring the hands back. So you feel this tension through the front of the feet. If that's enough for you already, then just sit down onto the heels like this. But uh, to be honest with you, that takes a little bit more pressure off if you can get back. It takes a bit more pressure off the front of the, the angle. And then, I want you to take the feet in line with the knees. And you're trying to sit your bum back down in between the feet. And for a lot of people that might be too intense. What you can do is you can sit your bum down onto a block or two blocks, whatever you feel comfortable with. If you want to increase the stretch here, then you walk the hands back a little bit. You can even come down onto the elbows. Or you can come down into this lying position. And basically, what we're doing for PNF stretch here is I'm kicking my thigh in towards the floor. So it's this action. Kicking away. Yeah? Kicking away with feet. I'm just going to stay in this position so I can talk to you. But, like, over time, it'll feel comfortable coming down to here. So pick a position where you've got a little bit of tension there, but not too much, and kick into the floor of both legs as you inhale. You've always got to watch the knee joint here as well, exhale. Sink the body back. Keep the hips low, squeeze into it. Kick into the floor, inhale. Exhale. Just really soft sink away. Like I said, I'm just going to stay here. Kick into the floor. 
exhale. Sink down one more time, kick. Exhale. Just rest there for 30 seconds or so. Next stretch that we'll be doing is a shoulder stretch and it's a, a bit of a weird one. So you have to set yourself up for it. If this is too much pressure on your knees, then come out of this stretch. Go back into um, this stretch, for example. So you can go into kicking through, pulling the thigh towards, uh, the heel towards your bum. But if you're able to stay in that saddle pose, and you're getting a nice stretch through the front of the quads, then happy days. So, take one more breath there. Exhale. Sink down, and then come out of the stretch. Just walk your elbows forwards. And straighten those legs out. Come into this modified sphinx pose where I've just got my hands together. Kick the knees back and forth. And this next stretch, as you've just seen there, actually using your, your chin. It doesn't matter about my feet at the moment, so I'm pretty comfortable with them up here. It doesn't make any difference to the stretch. But what I'm basically doing is, if you remember, if you remember me when I was doing the arm through stretch like this, it's very similar to that. But you're bringing the arm through and you're bending the elbow, but doing one hand at a time. And what you can do here is, you can use the chin and the weight of the chin to just rest onto this arm. And you're pushing away with the hand and creating this external rotation of the shoulder. If you want to, you can push down the hand, but to be honest, I think it's more awkward. And you can have the hand out towards the side, or you can have it here down towards the front. Whatever you intuitively feel like you want to do. And the PM is like a little bit like trying to slap yourself in the face, but you're pushing your chin down against and creating this tension here. And then you release off. So push away. One, two, three, four, five, six. Release away. Push away. One, two, three, four, five. Six, release. Two more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sink down. One more. Push away. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then just rest the head on there. Or if you want to, still get out of the until after a while. Take the hand on. Try and keep the shoulders square on. Try not to roll away. Try and have the body over the top of this arm. If you don't really feel much, it's probably just you're just lying here. Like so. If you roll the body over the shoulder, because it's that stretch that we did before. Just a little bit more intense and bring into a different part of the shoulder. more stretches after this and they're quite simple quite easy to do last inhale exhale release off move the arm through bring the other arm round towards the right hand side we go again here. Square up. Sit the hand down if you want to. Push into the, the chin or the hand. I like to get a little bit of neck strength in this as well. Exhale. Put the elbow right in. Turn over the top. Inhale. Pull in. Exhale, release. Two more. Pull in. Exhale, release. 
last one. Pull. Exhale. Just stay here. Stay. Keep the palm up. I can feel that deep into my shoulder. And I've got to try and resist myself and rolling away from this. Just because for me, this side is a little bit weaker through external rotators, also probably internal as well. These shoulder stabilizing muscles from the rotator cuff. Towards the last two exercises of our final class together. I'm getting pretty far down there now. Releasing the shoulder. Stick with it, leave it there. Literally, the last two are just having to lie down with a bit of a twist. Take care. Roll over onto your back and grab onto the feet, push the knees out, heels in towards the bum, knees out to the side. Both knees in towards the chest. Feet down and rock the knees over towards the left hand side, knees over towards the right hand side, and back up towards the top. When you take a block or something similar to that, these two we've done before. I'm going to use the cog block because I prefer a little bit, a little bit firmer for this. It just allows me to fly out from the hips a bit more. You're finding those two dimples of Venus again, and you're Drop them down onto the centre of that block and letting the body fall away. And this is what I was saying. Use a little bit of contemplation on this last one. Think back through all of the weeks. Think of where you've come from. Maybe you've learned um, a fair bit of information around stretching. Maybe you've learned a little bit about your body as an individual. Maybe you've learned where you're flexible, where you're inflexible. And this is important as we come towards the end of the program is that this isn't the end. We always need to come back and we always need to work into these places that are our weaknesses. And if we work through these weaknesses, keep that breath lengthened, there's no PNF in this one. It's just a really nice hip immobilizer for the SIJ joint. Doesn't matter where the hands are. You can close your eyes. We'll spend a little bit longer here, maybe 60 seconds to 90 seconds. And just feel everything start to spread out a little. Releases the pressure down in the hips. So guide the breath out for three more. say anything else for a couple of breaths and just again track through the whole of the program that you've been on. Squeeze the bum, lift up the hips Again, you can use this block for the next one, or you can use a spongy block. 
depends on how much you can take uh, for this. But we're going into a um, mobilization for the, thora the thoracic spine. So working through the mid of the back. And basically just extending over the block. I've got this on a medium height. That's pretty intense. And you can choose where you're placing the block. I can also bring my hands above my head if I want to. You want to increase the stretch? You tuck underneath. But you don't have to have on that medium set. You can come down onto the lower set, come over the back, and where you feel that pressure is where you're trying to mobilise into. I'm going to go up a little bit further just so I can keep progressing. I'm still on the journey, even though I've done this and my flexibility is quite good, there's still room for improvement. I've been doing yoga flexibility for about six or seven years now. My body's changed a lot since then. It's important to understand that, you know, flexibility, even strength, um, any type of training for any component of fitness takes repetition. It's not something that you just get overnight. You may get a, a quick gain, but then you have to keep working at it, working at it. And if you don't, obviously you have this reversibility where the body starts to go back to where it came from. So you always have to keep applying the right amount of um, stimulus to the body. You can extend the legs out if you want to here as well make much difference to me here because you, as long as you are thinking about where the position of my lower back is I'm sure I've got a little bit of engagement I'm not just letting my spine go wherever it wants then I end up not really having to push my legs out towards the front if you want to shift through different positions and with this stretch then feel fine to, sorry feel free to do that again just maybe spend a bit of time at the end of the class. One more breath there. Then pull yourself out of that, come into a counter stretch, grab onto the knees, let the head sink down towards the groin. Hands towards the rear, let the knees rock over from side to side. And there we have it, the final class where we're trying to really move deep into the musculature. Good luck for the testing tomorrow.